In 2020, the world experienced the impact of a reality completely paralyzed and isolated from everything. The COVID-19 pandemic forced the planet to shrink into a few meters, avoiding all types of human contact. Faced with this scenario, imagine what it would be like to spend life confined within a steel capsule. This is the story of Paul Alexander, the last of the United States to live with an iron lung. What were the days like inside this metal structure? What happened to this man, and why was he known as Polio Paul? Earth Echoes brings the voice of this fascinating story, which will continue to inspire lives as a true testament to the impact of diseases and the advancement of medicine in the world. The man who lived inside an iron lung for over 70 years passed away on March 11, 2024. At 78, Paul Alexander, widely known as Polio Paul, was freed from his iron lung in Texas, United States. The information was disclosed on his GoFundMe page and confirmed by his brother Philip Alexander in a Facebook post. The cause of death has not yet been confirmed, but there are suspicions that Paul may have died from complications of COVID-19. Since surviving polio in the 1950s, Paul had been using an iron lung to breathe. He contracted polio in the summer of 1952 when he was just six years old. Since then, Paul had been paralyzed from the neck down. At the time, he was rushed to a hospital in his hometown of Dallas, where doctors saved him with an emergency tracheotomy. Paul survived polio, but the viral disease meant that his body could no longer breathe on its own. The solution was to place him in a so-called iron lung, a metal cylinder that enclosed his body up to the neck. How did this large iron lung work? What was Paul Alexander's daily life like inside this large metal box? At just six years old, Paul Alexander woke up inside this large mechanical respirator where he would spend the rest of his life. This equipment is usually used in cases of paralysis of the breathing muscles or when the required effort exceeds the person's capacity. The lung, dubbed by Paul as the old steel horse, allowed him to breathe. The blowers would push air out of the cylinder, forcing his lungs to expand and receive the necessary air. When the air was returned, the same process in reverse would deflate his lungs, like a large mechanical breath. It is important to note that the use of this equipment has been significantly reduced after successive advances in medical technology. Nowadays, Mechanical ventilators and other more advanced devices are employed in supporting the breathing of patients with respiratory problems. At the time, this was the salvation for the polio outbreak, which reached epidemic proportions in 1952, peaking at over 57,000 cases in just one year in the USA. According to the UK Science Museum, the iron lung is a huge metal box developed by researchers at Harvard starting from 1900. The invention of the machine proved necessary due to small outbreaks of poliomyelitis that began to emerge in Europe and the United States. The outbreaks evolved into pandemic proportions during the first half of the 20th century in Europe, North America, Australia, and New Zealand. At this point, the peak age of incidence of paralytic poliomyelitis in the USA shifted to children between five and nine years old. Furthermore, deaths due to polio also increased during the period. In the United States, the 1952 epidemic evolved into the worst outbreak in the country's history. Of the approximately 58,000 reported cases that year, over 3,000 ended in fatalities, while 21,000 resulted in paralysis. To understand the impact of this disease on society, intensive care medicine originated during the fight against poliomyelitis. However, most hospitals at the time had limited access to the iron lung for patients unable to breathe without mechanical assistance. For Paul Alexander's salvation, technology was a reality at the Dallas Hospital, where he spent the last seven decades. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the United States describe the iron lung as a metal machine that mimics the human breathing pattern. 
The machine pumps air in and out, causing the person to breathe through a method known as negative pressure ventilation. The machine consists of a large, hermetically sealed negative pressure chamber that encloses the entire body of the reclined patient, leaving only the head outside. By creating negative pressure around the chest, the iron lung helps expand the patient's lungs, facilitating the entry of air. One of the biggest problems with the machine, however, was the boredom faced by isolation and immobility. The electric appliance featured windows and access doors for medical care, as well as a mirror so the patient could visually communicate with others. Most patients only use the device for a few weeks or months, depending on the severity of the paralysis. In cases like polio poles, the disease permanently paralyzed the chest muscles, leading to a lifetime of confinement in the machine. Nowadays, due to widespread polio vaccination worldwide, the use of the iron lung is extremely rare. Paul Alexander was the last of the United States to bid farewell to the need for the use of the large iron lung. Despite physical limitations, Paul redefined his life and became an example of determination to the world. Over time, Polio Paul learned a technique called frog breathing. The method involves swallowing air using throat muscles to force ventilation into the lungs. The technique allowed Paul to leave the machine for a few minutes, although never the entire day. His caregiver and friend, Kathy Gaines, states that a few years ago, Paul could rest outside the machine for a few hours. Later, he learned to handle a pen with his mouth to type on the keyboard and communicate better with others. Since then, Paul went to college, became a lawyer, and a published author. He recounts his battle in a book titled, Three Minutes for a Dog. During the COVID-19 isolation period, Paul's story has once again become a source of inspiration on the internet. Considering the medical costs, American Christopher Ulmer organized a crowdfunding platform. The organizer of the GoFundMe page emphasizes that Paul's story traveled the world, positively influencing thousands of people. For friends, family, and admirers, Paul will be remembered as an incredible model of life and resilience. In an interview with The Guardian in April 2020, the man from the Iron Lung spoke about his fears regarding the COVID pandemic. The report drew parallels between the polio outbreaks in the USA in the 1950s and COVID-19. For Paul, COVID was terrifying because it also affected the respiratory system and imposed social isolation, which he had been forced to face since childhood. Despite the great advancements of the man in the iron lung, Paul had to return to the machine full time at the age of 74. His condition had worsened in recent years after developing a persistent respiratory infection. Many other people could have depended on this large steel breathing machine if technology had not developed since then. In a press statement, his brother Philip thanked all the donations collected, which allowed Paul to live his final years without stress and worry. He says that Paul's absence will be felt, but his story will always be remembered. Poliomyelitis, or polio, is a disabling and potentially fatal disease caused by the polio virus. The virus spreads from person to person and can infect the spinal cord, causing paralysis and difficulty breathing. One of the serious consequences of virus infection is muscular paralysis. When this paralysis affected the chest muscles, the patient became unable to breathe. In 1939, the United States had about a thousand patients confined within mechanical iron lungs. The development of an effective polio vaccine led to the eradication of the disease in several countries. With the advancement of medicine, there was also progress in mechanical ventilation systems, leading to the end of the machine's use. Polio Paul was recognized by Guinness World Records as the person who lived the longest inside an iron lung. Earth echoes resonate through extraordinary lives like Paul Alexander's, true sources of resilience in moments of adversity. The man in the iron lung will always be remembered for his good humor and smile, even in the face of so many limitations. If you enjoyed learning a little more about this story, 
leave your comment. Don't forget to like and share the content so that others can also be inspired. See you next time.